Uh, let me answer a couple of questions real quick. Yes. Yeah, Frank. Um, just a couple of quick comments, which supports what you said there, and then two quick questions. Um, years ago, when Toyo first came here, there were it took thousands and thousands of applications before they could find their workforce, Correct. which gave us a really big black eye. And I remember Gene Lee as the chairman of the chamber at the time. So that's okay, black eye, we're going to move forward, and what do we do next? Well, the Georgia Work Ready came out. We came out on steroids on that, won the grants, got that going. And then uh, he came and started talking to us about the, uh, uh, the college and career academies. And we jumped on that. In fact, we made sure with so many community partners that we had a few hundred people every time you came in. I don't know right. if you noticed that. Oh, I, no, I remember <laughs> well. I remember and then, well. And then when you, when you were there and was talking about the grants coming out for this, I remember, you know, you were talking about Frazier, and she said something about, you know, I'll give you a cake if we get the grant. We got the grant. I don't know if there's a connection there. But what this... I'm a conservative. I'm a Republican. I don't do that kind of thing. But anyway, so just want to say appreciate that. And just a couple of comments. It has been such a great tool. Our industries come in, and that's one of the first places they go because they can get the workforce. We have one company, I believe it's, correct if I'm wrong, but it's HECO. You know, they've been investing in the heating and the air side of the right, right, it's been right, right, good. Right. And then also in that charter, which I wish we could get board support on the other side, but we haven't been able to yet, and I've suggested again in our last meeting, that we allow experts in the field to teach. Because we allow that at the academy. Yeah. We cannot have Bill Gates teach in our system, but we can at our college of yeah. You know, so some of that doesn't make sense. So those were the compliments. Uh, and this, and this, there's not nothing negative here, but just two of the things that really hit our taxpayers hard up here which there needs to be a change. I don't know what that is. This is where we need you know, leaders not even involved in this. But another thing that's costing us over the next three years, we already pay $9 million a year for the teacher retirement. We're about to hit another $4 million. And we need some leaders to tackle that issue because the state pours in hundreds of millions to back that system back up. And I, for the life of me, I can't see how the other year we lost money when the economy seemed to be doing so good. Uh, there, so I'm not sure. Maybe it's just a high number of retirements. Uh, but if you could look into that, I believe, which I know y'all have, but that hits everybody on there and the other end, <coughs> which y'all don't have as much influence as the healthcare. When I first started on there, we were like zero, and then this is my sixth year, I believe, on board. It just goes higher and higher and higher yeah. per person that we pay out, and that oh, yeah. hits the taxpayers, you know, as well. So if you yeah. could help tackle those. Issues and make some maybe a comment to that. Yeah, good yeah. point. Um, just real quick, uh, I think this is most of the comment. But um, the College and Career Academy, in order to qualify, it is a grant, and, and so it's a competitive grant. This year, we probably have 10 or 12 competing for that, and it is all scored. So, I mean, it is, it is a, a way in which we drive better outcomes because people do have to fight for it. It's not an entitlement. You have to really go after it. The other thing is you have to do that industry assessment of what are the workforce, what are the programs that we need uh, for a community to help shape what our economy can be for the future. And as a result, you guys have done that. And the other the other point so is... What's the case? Wasn't the cake, although I did like the cake. Uh, but, uh, uh, and tell her she can do me another cake. Uh, but, um, but, but, you know, the, the, the other point is you're right. I mean, you know, we very, very much want industry, okay, that really knows what their, what t students need to be taught to where those practitioners are there on site and being able to, to really instill uh, those, the, the knowledge that kids are going to need within the skill sets that are there. And we're, we're obviously opening up more and more of those opportunities as well. Uh, but, but we're just getting started. We're just getting started in terms of what we're really going to be able to have. So well, the taxpayers might like this real quick. The new industries coming in aren't asking for breaks on no. the school tax. Oh, no. They're coming in. No. They want the good workforce, oh. and so the early ones did, but the later ones now aren't asking for those programs. Right. And, and, and just to that point, um, in, in <coughs> Dublin, in Lawrence County, we have one. They felt they we landed a uh, 300 job manufacturing facility, and they cited the reason we're coming is because of this college and career academy. And by the way, we love it so much. 
we're going to put a million dollars of our own money into the college and career academy. So the reality is, it's again, if you create something that people see value in, they <coughs> will consume it. Okay. The problem is in public education, it's been it's our way, and we don't care what the parents think. We don't care what anyone else thinks. It's our way, and we're breaking that cycle. All right, right here. Yes. Okay, two questions. Yes. The first is the opiate epidemic. Oh, yes. I know that you're very involved with that issue right now. It's a great concern to many of us. Uh, you have yeah, a plan. I do. Can you give us a brief summary of that? And then I have one more question after that. Okay, all right, very good. So undeniably, the opioid crisis, and, 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 and what, I would, what I would really say as a broader context is this is an addiction problem, okay? And so when we look at addiction, there's no silver bullet, okay? I wish that there was. I wish that we could say, we just do this, then all this will be eradicated. It's not. We created a healthcare task force, I did. And we've had some of the brightest and best minds in the country have come in and talk about this. And it really is a combination of a lot of things. Um, we, we certainly have to have more restrictions that are going to be placed on physicians to where they're held accountable, okay? And, and when I say that, a third of our population across our state and really our country is owned some type of opioid. And we're also having additional problems as it pertains to individuals that are addicted that are having babies that are also addicted, okay? And, 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 and these are real issues that we have to confront. And no different than what we did, you know, with, with the meth problem and all of that to where uh, we had to put greater restrictions, okay? And so, yes, when my wife goes and gets Mucinex uh, uh, D, all right, she only can buy it in a 30 day supply. If she goes back next week to buy some, she's not going to be able to. Okay? All right? And the same is true as it pertains to this, but it's the heroin uh, that comes also. And, and so, as a result, we've got to manage it. We've got to have more community based centers and resource centers that are in place in order to help with this. Um, but we've got to think outside the box as well. I mean, this idea of um, and, you know, declaring war and, and, and like the president did, saying that this is a national emergency and bringing the awareness to it uh, is, is a big, big piece of that uh, uh, part of the solution. And the second question, as governor, if a bill came to your desk to make vaccines mandatory for everyone in our state. Would you sign that bill as governor? Um, it would, like, I mean, what are, what are you? California passed a bill last year that made vaccines mandatory for all school-age children. Yeah, uh, but I don't understand why you would do that. I don't. I didn't either. Okay. I want to make sure it doesn't happen uh, okay. in this state. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. I, That's why I, I'm concerned. Okay, all right. I thought maybe you were advocating for it, so no. I'm over here trying to process <laughs> it. What do I say? I mean, how is this Republican? You know, it's I mean, not. It's just big government. It was a, it was a yeah. Democrat yeah. that yeah. pushed that through in the yeah. state of California, yeah. Yeah. and it concerns me because. No. What happens in California tends to yeah. trickle down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the state of Mississippi and the state of West Virginia do that too. That's right. Yeah, well, we, we don't. Well, not, we don't, and I have no intentions sure, of doing it. Yeah. These, these are just pretty much yeah. yes and no questions. You can elaborate if you want to. All right, sure. And this is what you've been talking about. This, to me, would fix a lot of the problem with the poverty and all that like that. Basically putting Georgians first. You know, kind of like that's why Trump's in office, because the blue-collar worker has been left behind. And I ain't gonna say that's a, like you said, a silver bullet's gonna fix everything. But like programs, is there any kind of programs that you maybe uh, are in the works of thinking of? It? Not, I know we got a lot going on with the young people. I'll get to that just on the education thing. But basically, some kind of incentive for middle-aged people that's kind of sort of got caught in the crossfire with NAFTA, with the open border policy. And I know you touched on that about sanctuary cities. I've been yeah. reading some of your stuff in emails. Um, is there any kind of uh, like going back to school for us? Sure, sure. And uh, 
pretty much I think that's all on that. So is there any kind of programs? Because a lot of us that's had to cash out 401ks. Yeah, and yeah, what, yeah, yeah. No, 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 and no, no, middle excellent. age people got caught excellent. in the crossfire, and excellent. that's excellent. a lot of your poverty. Excellent question. Excellent question. Um, and, and one that I, I value deeply. I mean, the economy and the skills that are necessary are changing across, across every sector. And, and you're exactly right. Middle America, okay, and is, is where our focus needs to be. And I hate to say it this way, I, I don't worry about people like me, all right? I mean, and, and I don't want to paint a picture that I'm a super wealthy man, but God has blessed me richly, okay? So I'm going to be okay. I'm not worried about me, all right? And, but it's me being able to create more opportunities for greater economic prosperity where no one is left behind. That's what I say. And when I say that, that doesn't just mean young people. That means everyone, okay? And so we're not only going to offer, obviously, the dual enrollment, the college and career academies, the German apprenticeship programs at the high school level. We're also going to be offering more and more programs that are going to be free. No offense to the senior citizens going to that college. I've been saying that, but no. middle-aged people really need more but, than seniors. But, but, no, but, but, but no doubt. Because the workforce needs it. The workforce yeah, needs exactly. it. And we've got to have it. And the ability to increase wages, we, we literally can get to, to a much higher median income across our state than where we are. All right, so you, you're on track on now. Yeah. All right, sounds great. All right, last, uh, one, one other one, one other one. It's a, it's a yes or no one. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, uh, I, I'll, ask, I'll just ask this other one one-on-one. -on -one. If you don't run out of here, I'll ask this other one. <laughs> this one I hear, though, people don't really talk about this one, but I remember even as a kid growing up in the 80s with Joe Frank Harris's promises won't work. Joe Frank Harris, Will, y'all remember that one? Oh, yeah. oh. Well, anyway, I remember seeing all this go down from something. When I went to the military, got out, and then taking down the Confederate flag, and uh, we let that no. go. We didn't vote on that, it just no. got done. Now we're te tearing down statues. No. When is no. this going? When is this going to stop? When no. are we going to stand and say, let's let's vote on this stuff? Or? No, it's already it's already stopped. So let me be very very clear. Okay, we have a state law on the books that does not allow any local jurisdiction whatsoever to remove any Confederate memorials. Okay, and we plan on enforcing that. So even though you're reading, you're reading in the in the paper that some counties, uh, some cities and counties are voting to remove. Guess what? They're not able to. They vote all they want, but none of those statues are leaving. All right. And you cannot erase history, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. You cannot erase history. You can add to it, but you can't relate or erase it. That's the key. Lewis, let me get Lewis first. Yeah. Um, or, or were you here to say, no. enough, enough, enough. <laughs> <laughs> but anybody in this room that knows me knows that it's never enough. Uh, I, I can talk about this all day. Um, no, the question I had uh, kind of touches on an issue that you know, crosses you know, the foundational principles we talked about, you know, uh, families and sure. business and so forth, and that's the, the religious liberty issue, which yeah. has yeah. come back yes. up. Now, in uh, the 2016 session, we passed a, a great mm -hmm. religious liberty bill. Yeah. You know, passed the House, Senate, went to Governor Dill's desk, and uh, he received considerable pressure from business interests, yeah. um, and he vetoed it. Right. Now, I was very grateful that you know you came out uh, either that evening or the next day, and you know said that you know we need to bring this legislation back. Yeah. That religious liberty must be protected. Um, you know, then, uh, of course, you know, as it's come back up here in the last month or two, um, you know, there are some articles in the paper, um, which, you know, our folks can trust them. But, uh, Fake news. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but that, uh, you know, basically say that, you know, you are wavering on that issue. And, of course, now we've got Amazon coming in, and we know that they are a very, very much a left-leaning yeah. uh, company and but but they also wield tremendous power because they're enormous and they have a lot of money to throw around yeah and so let me ask uh, you. I, I got you I got yeah. you so so uh, <laughs> the, uh, that's what I like about up here at Bartow y'all have to talk just you know, uh, the, uh, which is good let, let me let me be very very clear okay um, because in the world of politics there's there are those that want to speak you know for me all right and 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 oftentimes that becomes frustrating. And it's always best to hear directly from me, all right? 
Am I in favor of RIFRA? Okay. Have I? Do I have a record in being in favor of RIFRA? Yes. Am I wavering on that? Absolutely not. Okay. Plain and simple. I signed a pledge that said a mirror image of the federal RIFRA standard I will sign as governor. Okay. So everybody needs to be very, very certain, no matter what anybody says. You know, and I had a meeting just the other day with one of the top business sectors in our state. Um, and we had this very conversation. The law of the land. We have a, a federal RIFRA that is the law of the land, okay? And it's not too much to ask to simply say, you don't have to go to a federal judicial system, you can go to a state judicial system, okay? Now, with all that being said, I am a born again believer, okay? And, and I take not just my, my religious beliefs serious, but also my free exercise of that, all right? That is something that we all should always protect, and I will. But on the same token, I'm not for discrimination, okay? I want to be very, very clear. I am not for discrimination. So I'm not in favor of somebody putting a sign up, you know, on a window that says, you know, that you're not welcome here for whatever reason. I don't do that at my church, okay? I mean, I may not approve. I may not philosophically believe in what they are doing, but what did Christ teach us? What did He teach us? What did He say to the woman at the well? Right? I wasn't saying no more. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, but but I mean, but did He? Did I mean what? He did not. Con, he did not condemn. condemn her. Okay. He, Is that the, what He said? He's shacking up, basically, with two or three, or living with one? Because there's two of them He talked to. Yeah. Right? Is that all right? Go and say no more. But my, my point here is that we, do, we, we need, not that we need, we need to love everyone. That's right. Okay? It's never been used in any successful discrimination case. So yeah. I think you're on solid ground. Yeah, you know, absolutely. The, the left says it, but if there's yeah. a public interest, yeah. you know, that's why it would be illegal for you to say, oh, we don't serve your kind here or whatever. That, yeah. that, that We're not going up. back. We're not going yeah, back to the space. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. So that's that. So. You want to know where I'm at? That's very. That's as cl plain and clear as I can make. Yes, sir, right here. Uh, I want to tap into what Fred said because going to the school board meeting set on several times and voicing my opinion with the board on the school board tax, the uh, Dr. Hopper, the superintendent, sent certain people a letter that he wanted us to come and see. And he had his uh, department heads on at the uh, district level and basically he said well we're paying more in retirement we're paying more in health and he went th mm. they went through and discussed all that and he said the problem here is that the state is not compensating for all of these increases mm -hmm. and, you yeah. know correct me if I'm wrong and so the state does throw hundreds of millions but they're asking us to bear part of the load so it's actually, but you're right. I mean, it's we could. And so, and, and, and so, what, what's ha what's happening? We had a, a, a large turnout for uh, senior citizens because the school board tax in Barto is much higher than the surrounding counties. In fact, it's more much, it's more in taxes than the uh, Barto County tax. Yeah. So y'all don't have an exclusion here uh, for no. senior citizens? No. no. And, and so as a result, uh, I personally know of five uh, people that just recently left Bonto because of the tax, uh, uh, and they've gone to Cobb, they've gone to Floyd, and they've gone to Cherokee. Mm -hmm. So as a result of that, if the state doesn't compensate or give more money, uh, and they went over the years on how much money the state has, has not been giving them as in the past. And as a result, I know they have to meet you know, and pay all the expenses of running the system. Sure. But what is your opinion on that? 
Um, well, I mean, there's a lot to, to comment on, you know, on what you just articulated. Um, you know, one, one of the issues, obviously, is senior citizens, and you're, you're right, there are many, many communities that do give a tax exemption uh, or a reduction for senior citizens. And, uh, and that's a local decision. I don't get to make that decision. Yeah. That's your decision to make. And, um, but I can articulate to you uh, a couple of things. One is that the state spends 50% of all of the revenue that we get on education. Okay. Now, is it adequate? Is it enough? Are we seeing additional expenses that are moving that with health care in particular? Absolutely. We are. But, but it's not just in schools, right. it's in businesses too. I mean, the reason that Obamacare needed to be repealed and replaced is because there's nothing about it that's affordable, okay? I mean, we've seen double-digit increases on health insurance at every level, and deductibles have gone through the roof. This is not sustainable. That's why a fix needs to be put in place. Now, to your point, um, it takes money to educate our kids. I get that, all right? But I also want to make sh sure that everyone understands that if money bought you the best educational system, then Atlanta Public Schools would be the best <laughs> because they spend more per student than anywhere else, okay? Money doesn't do it. And so you, you, you can't always predict what's going to be on the revenue side of the ledger but you can always predict what's going to be on the expense side of the ledger, okay? <laughs> and that's why I've done the charter school system uh, program where it gives you greater flexibility where you can utilize those resources far more liberally, okay, in, in the right way to direct it to where it needs to be. And, and in exchange, we want higher accountability measures. So I believe in a public educational system that truly is local control but not a top-down, but a bottom-up, to where we have community-based organizations there with teachers and parents that are there at the site that are actually managing and having more decision-making process. Um, not everyone agrees with me on that, but I believe in business that was the way I was successful. I empowered people to do good a good job. If they didn't do it, I would replace them, you know? And, and just, it was that plain and simple. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I'm going to get back into a factual realm here, yeah. dealing with money. Sure. Uh, number one, uh, there's a fund that we all pay for tires. One of my favorite funds. It's a dollar for every tire you buy. Right. It goes. It's being collected by DNR for the Solid Waste Trust Fund (SWTF). In the course of the 20 plus years that that has been collected approximately 80 plus percent has gone into the general fund as opposed to going to the intended purpose of the legislation when it was passed. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an item that actually was collected for a few years by DNR after the legislation expired. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody here who has to go buy tires is still paying that. Would you look at auditing a group like that as well as the fact that we actually would be paying right at two dollars a gallon for gas without the billion dollar increase that we just had on the gasoline tax mm -hmm. uh, which goes to GDOT. Mm -hmm. To me that is one of my favorite things that we have not had a true accounting from governmental entities as far as where the funds are going. Yes, I mean, at the, the short answer to the question is absolutely yes, and, and I can promise you under a Cagle administration, we're going to have audits, and we're going to make certain that we're holding every agency accountable to utilize the resources in the most efficient way, but more importantly, that performance audits are being done as well, Right. okay? And there's one thing to have a financial audit, it's another thing to have a performance audit that holds everyone accountable to taking the resources that they have and producing the results that we expect as a result. That is equally as important. Yeah, so good the, question. The, Hold on, the, I got all these questions that everybody wants to ask. So let me just to try to get, uh, 
you want me to? Uh, yeah. Let me let me let just try to make it yes or no or whatever. I mean, real uh, real quick answer. Real quick questions. Real quick answers. You mentioned um, <laughs> internet access, rural internet yes. access. Yes. Yes. Uh, quickly over 20 years, I've gone through satellite, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Horror, horror. 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 Verizon, um, back yeah. on satellite now. They, they after two years, they That's seem to kind of go away. Got they move their tower towers. They then I have to change services. Got I try to get AT&T. Yeah. They got a substation where their lines are about yeah. a mile away. I'm with you. I got it. I got, said, I got your question. They said I, I can, we could, uh, okay. FCC or whatever. Right. Right. Said, right. 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 We can tell them, but you know, that's all we can do. What are you going to, what can you do? All right. Go to my website and look at my rural broadband initiatives. Mm -hmm. It spells it all right. out in detail. And long story short, the, we already have the Georgia Technology Authority that is in place. The issue is, again, goes back to kind of what we were saying a moment ago, is you've got to have not just access, but you also have to have reliability along with that, all right? <coughs> and so we're going to have the Georgia Technology Authority that's going to be administering to hold people accountable, to do what they say they're going to do, and we're going to create an initiative for the build out that will be more public private partnerships. We're going to open up the P3 initiative for that to occur. We're going to give sales tax exemptions for those for, for bearing the cable that goes in uh, for communities that are willing to put their right away and permitting, expediting all of those things. So it's a long list of things, but that gives you a great uh, feel for it. Senator Thompson. Governor, I know, appreciate first of all you coming up here to Arthur County. I know that um, there are a lot of questions from various sectors that represent the different interests. Here's one that represents pretty much everyone, and maybe you can land on this. You know, with the economy the way it was for the longest time, it was easy to jump on 75 and go to Atlanta and, and right. go on to the airport. Um, and today, if you don't get on the center state out here at 530 for me to get to Capitol, it's an hour yeah. and 40 hours, 45 minutes. I realize we've got the flyover. You go over to Cherokee, you've got the same concerns right there. So our successes are now giving us opportunities to address the challenges. Maybe in a 70,000 feet, if you can address for this crowd, in a Kegel administration, how do we tackle the successes we have if we've got four more million people moving towards yeah. state? I'll be distracted. Great, great point. You, first of all, you know, I, I'm a businessman first politician second so everything that I've ever done in life has been in a very much in a pre-market solution you go out and you find somebody who has done it before and can do it again okay when I started a bank that's exactly what I did every other business venture I, that's exactly how we, we move forward and we've got to make sure that our our agency heads are around or have a vision around what where I want to go in terms of building out the infrastructure of the state. We have to utilize the assets that we have in the most efficient way possible. We're not doing that, okay? When I come, now I'm on the other side of, 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 of the mountain, shall we say, but I'm, I'm in Hall County. I travel to Atlanta. When I come in the AM timeline, it's the same problems that you have here, okay? Total congestion southbound. But when I look across the median, what do I see? Nothing. Tons of capacity, okay? <laughs> There's not hardly anybody over there on the northbound side. If I was in Virginia or any other place, do you know what they do? They reverse those lines, okay? They allow you to get over there and utilize that asset because the need is to get to Atlanta, all right? And then when you are going in the PM timeline, they reverse it around, same thing happens. We've got, and, and Senator Thompson knows this. I've been on the DOT for at least five years with these movable barriers that are able to utilize the asset in the most efficient way. We're going to finally get it on I-20, okay? But these are these are solutions that are pre-market ideas, not just a bureaucrat's idea of let's build something and forget it for 30 years. That's not the world we live in today, right? I mean, it's about always innovating. And so we've got to be focused on that. And we also spend more on right-of-way acquisition than we do road construction, okay? Right-of-way acquisition is very, very expensive. 
And so, yes, we're going to have to look at some elevated type systems. And I'm going to tell you something. There, and I'm not talking about just the way that one's done that you're going, you're going to see on 75, but there are some really good corridors that exist within our state that could literally be elevated in a way that is very aesthetically pleasing. And it can be done in the reversible con, uh, concept. The, these reversible lanes are, are, are undeniably the future. And the other thing is, uh, and, and don't, you know, some of y'all may laugh, but autonomous vehicles are coming, okay? All right? And, and I'm not saying that everybody needs to go get an autonomous vehicle. <laughs> what I'm saying is that when we're building these roads, we've got to be thinking to the future. We've got to have that technology in the roads to be able to do the things that are necessary. But what excites me more about the autonomous vehicles is that you have autonomous buses, okay, mm -hmm. and other types of means by which we can utilize. So we've got to think well into the future as it pertains to what the things that we're going to be doing to prepare for the kind of shape, the kind of growth that we're going to need. Last one. Y'all are wearing me. Y'all are getting your money's worth today. I'll tell you. That's good. Right here. Yes, sir. Okay, first of all, I want to say congratulations for being part of such a distinguished group of gentlemen. I think everybody running it has great confidence, sure. everything else. Yes. After reading everything yes. and after going to uh, the convention this summer, everybody says the same thing. Yeah. Everybody who's, who's going against everybody has the same thing to say about everybody, so it makes it very hard to make a determination on sure. who I want to choose. Right. So right, with that sure. saying, uh -huh. what would spark your interest? Uh, like, What would make you super happy about being the thought about being governor in the morning and what makes you set apart from everybody else? That's a, I mean, that's a great, great question. It's a great question and a great one to end on. So, uh, <laughs> Take me, um, you are the establishment candidate. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Been there a long time. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I like this guy over here. <laughs> I'm probably going to punch him in the mouth before. <laughs> uh, I like him. Uh, but no, um, I, I want to respond. I mean, uh, first of all, I totally, totally am not an establishment yet. That's first and foremost. Uh, well, I mean, you've been in there a long time. I you know mean, I, the, yeah, but, but, but I, you have to understand, I have a huge, huge distaste for the establishment, all right, and, and, and also career politicians because they put their interest ahead of the interest of, of our citizens, and, and, and so I'm, I don't have to make a living doing this, okay? But 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 I choose to, and and, and so to, to your to your question though, um, listen, I, I fully understand. Um, you're right. In a campaign, you're going to have a lot of candidates that are going to say a lot of things, and and some of them are going to be true, some of them are not, and 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 you have to determine who it is that you feel represents you the best and has the passion to deliver for the state. Um, and, and I will tell you, you also have to look at their record. You have to really fundamentally look at their record. Who are they, what are they about, and how have they voted? Um, now, you know, I mean, are there a few votes that I probably wished I could have back, you know? Uh, yes, I mean, because I have been in public service for a long period of time. But there is no question when it comes to who is the proven, consistent, conservative leader in this race. Ain't nobody got a record like I do. Okay, that's just plain. And <coughs> I don't mean, and I don't mean that in an arrogant way. I'm just stating the facts, and and that is clear, and that is out there, um, and it's been validated by every third party that that you know would look at it. it on Second Amendment, I mean. A plus rating from the NRA for all the years that I've been in public service. As it pertains to standing up for the unborn, my wife and I helped start a crisis pregnancy center. I created a, a, a funding mechanism, okay, to help through grants with our crisis pregnancy centers, not giving it to Planned Parenthood, okay. I was also the life champion uh, of the state on this particular issue. Uh, on fiscal matters, uh, I, have, I have been the, 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 the hardest voice to ensure that government is maintaining our budget 
okay, in a very responsible way, that it is not growing beyond what population or inflation is, is doing. So I am a huge fiscal conservative. But I'm also a person that is a, you know, a visionary. I'm wanting to move this state forward. I'm not looking, you know, to stop it, <laughs> okay? I'm wanting to move it forward. And I'm wanting to create that economic prosperity that leaves no one behind. So those kids that I talked about, I'm going to be in the gap. I'm going to fight for them. And I have great passion for doing that. And, um, you know, so... So, I mean, I think you, will, you you see someone with a proven, consistent, conservative record uh, that can back it up, but also has a vision for where we want to go. And honestly, the experience to get us there. I mean, you know, a lot of times we like to say, well, I, you know, I want somebody fresh. I want someone new. Well, and, and I do too, in many cases, particularly when you have someone that's not getting the job done. But I'm going to promise you one thing. When, if I have to have open heart surgery, I'm not going to go to a doctor who's never done open heart surgery. <laughs> All right? I'm going to go to a doctor who's done it. And guess what? Not one time. <laughs> Hopefully a thousand times. Okay? I mean, I want someone who has been there and who has done it before and can do it again. And I've served with two governors, and I've learned an awful lot through that process. And so I know how to shape public policy in the right way. I also know how to make sure that we can negotiate through the economic development deals that are important for us. Thank you, Thank you all very much.